Hi, I'm Tom. Oblivion is one of those games that I always think about. It had everything going for it at the time. Big open worlds, interesting character developments, and of course, amazing quests. In this video, I'm going to focus on one mission in particular that I always think about when discussing amazing quests and games. The mission I'm going to be talking about is titled Caught in the Hunt, a mission which stands out for me as it subverts expectations by leading you down a certain path, and then the world falls on top of you. The quest begins with the character you control, the hero of Kavach, wandering into a town called Bravel. You will find a woman called Urson Locke walking around urgently. You talk to her, and she tells you that her husband Alaron has a gambling addiction, and often visits the arena to bet on combatants. He did this with the hope of winning big, and then moving out to a bigger city. He ultimately ended up in debt, and owing a lot of gold. He was taking out loans from an orc named Curden. The orc then invited Alaron in his home, and since then, he never returned. So now it's up to the player to accept the errand and go visit Curden themselves. You cross a bridge and enter a small lodge. You then find Curden and talk to him. He comes off as hostile straight away, so you have to use the world famous speech skill in order to gain his trust. He then asks a favour of you. He tells you that a family heirloom has been lost in an area called Fort Grief Island. The item in question is called the Axe of Dragal. Return with the axe and he will tell you of Alaron's location. The only way to access the area is by boat. Curdan has one waiting for you, which you can use. After sailing to Fort Grief, you will find that this area isn't accessible by any other means, as it's surrounded by miles of water. The player opens a gate which leads into the fort and you find Alaron almost immediately. He looks down beat and informs the hero that he has fallen for the same trick that he has, and goes on to say that Curdan promised to wipe away his debt if he retrieved the axe. He also tells you that the gate to the entrance is now locked. So what is going on here exactly? Why is Curdan luring people out to this place? As it turns out, this is a hunting ground where clients pay Curdan in order to hunt human prey. To make this sick game fair for the prey, the hero must kill the hunters and retrieve the keys in order to win. After the task is completed, you return to Alaron who is now confronted by Curdan, who quickly kills him. Once you are finished fighting Curdan, you are free to leave. The player returns back to Ursan with the devastating news. It's truly a tragic end to a great quest. As with most open world Bethesda games, this mission can be tackled whenever you wish. I decided to attempt this mission early on as it's one of my favourites. I always seem to prefer Bethesda's side quest missions compared to the main quest. I guess it's because with main quests, you can always go too deep down the rabbit hole, and before you know it, you've completed the whole story. Side quests feel more rounded and more thought out to me. Sometimes main quests can have an all filler, no thriller kind of feel to them. The first time playing this quest felt epic, as you were given these crumbs to follow in terms of a story that doesn't quite add up. That was about 15 years ago though. When I played this section of the game recently, I appreciated it for more reasons than just nostalgia. I noticed that the breadcrumbs thrown down by Curdan were progressively getting worse as you continue the conversation. You can clearly see that he is setting you up for something sinister. I missed this the first time around. The story has a lot of depth in it to make it into a main questline or a side quest that has a few more outcomes. One small problem I have with this mission is its title as it gives away the twist. It would have been more mysterious to call it something like a man and his debt or something like that. When you first enter through the gate of Fort Grief, you are greeted with blood smeared all over the walls and in the courtyard, skeletons lay on the ground which is a spooky indication indeed. The fort is decaying, the place is rotten with the corpses the hunters have killed. On top of this, the courtyard is fairly open but because you can't escape, it seems small, almost claustrophobic. After you talk with Alaron, you head underground which is incredibly dark. There are lots of traps which can prove fatal. I had to always have the light spell active in this area as it's difficult to navigate otherwise. The hunting ground is designed so that it's a one way system. You cannot take shortcuts necessarily, but there are certain paths which take the same time as others. They are just there to disorientate the player. It's interesting that this quest is about sending you on a wild goose chase, only for you to get more confused when you are at the end. The characters in Oblivion can be outdated and comical at times, due to how old this ambitious game is. This doesn't stop the player from enjoying the side quests and the strange scenarios that you find yourself in. This game makes you wonder what certain characters' motives are and whether they are telling the truth or just taking advantage of you. In the case of this mission though, Ursan and Alaron sound sad at the thought of losing each other, and with Alaron being in debt and in a dire situation, this feels tragic as you genuinely feel sorry for him. Then there's Curdan, an orc that initially comes across as strict but rather reasonable, only for him to turn out to be a nasty bastard that gets off to hunting vulnerable people while making a quick buck. If I could show a person one quest that reflects the Oblivion universe and reveals both the yin and the yang of the characters, then it probably would be this one. The Elder Scrolls series has always had interesting enemies that will make you plan your attacks. Archers and other ranged enemies are best faced from a distance as they will take a more relaxed approach. 
Swordsmen and sorcerer enemies will run at you and attack you head on. In this mission, most of the hunters are located underground in Fort Grief. The dungeon area is dark, which makes it more difficult to fight the hunters. On a YouTube video titled The Making of Oblivion, the team were questioned what makes the AI in the game special, and none other than Todd Howard answered, We designed this radiant assistant AI that allows the people in the world to react intelligently. They sort of have their own goals, so they can look at their own environment around them and decide how to accomplish them. The goals of the hunters are simply to take you out, and they will stop at nothing to track you down. Interestingly, outside of this mission though, you will be followed for a while if you agitate an aggressive NPC, but they will ultimately give up if you go too far. In terms of music, the game plays songs on a loop. That sounds like a negative, but it's honestly not. The orchestral soundtrack is made in a certain way to ensure that it suits multiple moods, whether it be entering the world of Cyrodiil for the first time, engaging in battle, or being trapped inside of a castle. This game has one of the most effective soundtracks for immersiveness. Inside the hunting ground, the music changes up a little and offers a darker tone. This can be heard most times when entering dungeons and it adds to the fear that someone is watching. The music cues are effective when the player goes from area to area. A Lee motif is signalled when you know an enemy is about to attack. It will play a type of battle song. This is highly useful when you don't know a hunter is about to strike. Although the game released in 2006, certain aspects still make it worthwhile to go back to this classic game and rediscover everything that it has to offer. Even with amazing open world games still being released every few months, it's missions like this that makes the whole experience worth revisiting. Although the engine and graphics feel a little outdated, the core of the game makes everything as enjoyable now as it was then. The world of Oblivion is unlike any other, well, except maybe Skyrim and The Witcher series. Every other open world game has its own merits and exceeds in areas that Oblivion doesn't, and vice versa. You can explore most areas on the map, but most missions will make you explore one particular area. Caught in the hunt is no different. This mission makes you get on a boat which sails you out to an area you cannot access unless you are doing this quest. I like these limitations at times because it makes the area you are exploring just that little bit more special. Bethesda games, like Naughty Dog and Valve, are experts when mixing exciting gameplay with occasional puzzles. I always welcome this, as you can get burned out if you have too much of one thing and nothing fresh. Upon arriving at Fort Grief, you get told that you need to find the three keys in order to escape. Sort of like Fort Boyard, really. This makes the player hunt the enemies, instead of them hunting you. It is possible to sneak up on the hunters, but you have to be extra vigilant as the traps are very easy to set off, and they also draw a lot of attention. The objective of finding the three keys adds more excitement to the quest as you have to search each hunter to see if they have the keys on them. They prove pivotal in order to escape and explore the world of Oblivion. Normally, in other missions, the player comes across reading material and other subplots relating to other characters. Unfortunately in this quest though, there is nothing of note, just traps and hunters waiting for you. Everything has been stripped bare, like how a hunting ground should be. This is encouraging for the player though, as that means that there are no distractions and leads to hidden areas. The player just gets on with the task in hand, killing the hunters and escaping. Cameras and video games are often overlooked when talking about games. I feel that in the game Oblivion, the third person view is limited to outdoors when venturing through forests and over mountains. I rarely utilise the third person camera angle in Oblivion, as I feel that the first person is always more immersive. However, in missions like this, where the dungeon is riddled with traps and lurking enemies, it is useful to have the option to switch between the third person view, as you can see more than you would in first. This is a great tool to alternate with, as it benefits you while you are on the lookout for enemies and traps. So to summarise why I like this mission so much, I think that Caught in the Hunt offers a huge insight into what Oblivion is all about. It makes use of relatable and downbeaten characters and follows it up with a mischievous gang that doesn't necessarily care about morals. All they want is their bloodlust. While Kurdan enjoys hunting, I think that his main goal is to make money and impress his friends. This mission also makes use of showing the player how important it is to never trust a character 100%. Always be cautious, and never, under any circumstances, except to go to an island to search for a missing axe, or else this happens. As this quest is fairly long, it is also a great advert to show the player why side quests are unique and are worth doing instead of focusing on the main quest. Thanks so much for watching this video. I had a lot of fun revisiting this game and I always enjoy focusing on one mission alone. These types of games have always resonated with me. If you like this video, I have a few more on my channel if you'd like to check them out. I plan to do more when I can. Thanks for stopping by and have a wonderful day.